Hello and welcome to another episode of West Underground. Today we have none other than Beck uh, Charlwood. Sorry, <laughs> hang on, we'll go again, we'll go again, we'll go again. Take number two. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of West Underground. Today we have none other than Beck Charlwood on the podcast. She has joined us. I've got a name right this time. <laughs> We're off to the races. And uh, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, this is going to be a brilliant episode. Um, I can already feel it. Beck has, uh, Beck has joined us today and uh, she was in Newcastle last night. And you're back in Sydney today. Yes. Yeah. We did a very quick drive in and drive out. Uh, it was, and we, for the first time ever, usually I drive to these gigs, but someone else volunteered. So I have partook in some drinking and that is why my voice is very dry today. And I apologize. If did that's... you do any road beers? Yes. Did you doing road beers? Oh, you yes. naughty thing. Yeah. I know. I, can I, love. Love. I, can love. I don't think I've ever done road beers because I was such a goody two shoes. Is that you, Hamish? Yeah, that's Sometimes me. Sorry, right. guys. I, I, no, I you're a... right. You're right. Sometimes I forget I'm the new one doing this. <laughs> Jesus, Hamish. No, I, I didn't uh... want to roll on and just fuck up the recording and make you have to edit around yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Hugh, you got this. You got this. So, Beck, you were playing the big room last night at Newcastle in the Civic? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, So we had three gigs. We had two at Newcastle Comedy Club and one at the Civic. And it was me, Billy Darcy, who you've had on this podcast, Will Gibb, who a lot of people will know from TikTok, who's also a fantastic comic, and yeah. Alex Malinkovich, who's the same. Uh, and we were going up to do the Civic Theatre. And me and Billy started together. Like my first ever gig in Sydney was with Billy at this like uh, underground bar in Manly. And it was pissing down with rain. And like, it was just like, it was, a big moment and then us driving to the civic theater we were like shit oh, this yeah. is a big moment we were like, like look look at us who the thought it not me yeah, not I, me. Yeah. I had a little speech in my head of like <laughs> turning to billy just like looking out on the stage and being like you know we started in manly in started a from the bottom room, now we're here and now we're here at the civic wow. Theater, 1,500 people. We that's made amazing. it, brother. Made um, it. But that's not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we what happened? I had this all in my head. I was so excited to make a moment. Uh, and then we showed up and they quickly ushered us into the far smaller 200 seat theater. And we were like, oh, I was like, I'm so glad I didn't say anything. I'm so glad yeah. I just get that <laughs> in my head. Well, size is all relevant, isn't it? So I think, I think you know, it's a big room to some people. That's yeah. a big room. How big was the capacity in Manly when you started? Oh, 50 people. Like, you made it? Yeah. 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 Times four, baby. Five years later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I was you... watching a video before we started, Beck, and it looked like you played uh, some, you you have done some pretty big theatres in your in your time. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I forget about it all the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done a couple of big ones. I've done the Civic, the big room a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, I also did... The weirdest one is that I've done the J uh, Joan Sutherland in the opera yeah. house, but there's a catch before everyone thinks that's really impressive is that it was the middle of lockdown and they were just filming stand up sets in there with like 20 people in the audience. So yeah. <laughs> I do get the prestige of being like, yeah, this is in the opera house, but I always leave out the part that it was entirely empty. And yeah, I've keep that on nerve wracking. I keep Look, that on it's the still the Sydney opera house. It still counts. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> now, so how long how long have you been doing stand up for? Back. I've been doing it for eight years now. Um, but I really just want to knock two years off for COVID because I oh, feel yeah, that don't count. I think Pat Doherty said the same thing, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said. Yeah, I'm like they I don't, don't want to be two years away from doing it for ten years because that doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel fair. I feel like we got you know set back. But eight eight years on paper. Um, I started out yeah in Perth in twenty. 14. Now, now Beck, on you know how you said there that those two years don't count. What I want to what I want to say, and uh, in go, this is going back to what I saw of you on, on YouTube uh, in a in one in a massive theater. I don't know where it was, but uh, it looked like the stage was huge. And um, oh, that would be the Opera House one, the one where I'm in the old denim. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And That's looked, the Opera House. Uh, well, when you were in the Opera House, I I, I saw you on. Uh, 
on on the stage and you and you you said that uh you know a, a, a little spiel about comedians and comparing them with musicians and i have to say i think we're all jealous of you guys because over this lockdown period you did so much better than us and like mm. you guys you guys really were like okay you know fuck the live shows we can't do it i suppose so we're gonna go on to this we're gonna go digital and and you guys killed it right and uh i, I just wanted to say like you know, it, those two years don't count, but I feel like it just put more tools in the comedian toolbox. Oh, uh, you nailed it on the head there. The last two years has been like a learning a whole new skill set. And I'm so grateful because I think for ages, comedians did do the opposite thing of being like only live gigs. That's how we do it. Mm. Whereas musicians, if you want to get known, you have to put music out. You have to put out tangible albums so people can follow you yeah. and love you and herald you. And comedians have been so stubborn for ages of just be like, nah, if you want to see me, you got to show up to the fucking ugliest dive bar. It's going to be stinky floors, warm beer. And that's how you'll love me. <laughs> <laughs> but because of COVID, we had to put our pride aside and be like, oh, this internet thing, we actually really need to get around this because this is how people, yeah, how you get a following, how you get fans, how you let people love you in a weird <laughs> in yeah. a gooey way <laughs> it's, it's weird though isn't it and so like we we've had similar things with like writing music in lockdown is because because you're not road testing any of it you like i i think it might be good you know <laughs> my yeah. mom my mom sure thinks she thinks that's good right but <laughs> the people the audience the sound on board but for you to come up with a joke and we kind of had this conversation with pat when he was on the other week it's your your tags and your things and your joke must change all the time. Oh, you know, the more yeah. you do it and you go, oh, yeah, no, that, that works better and, you know, gets a better reaction out of people. When you're putting comedy out to the internet, that must be quite daunting. Yeah. Oh, I was terrified of it for years. Like, if you'd asked me two years ago if I would ever put stand-up online, I would be like, no way. There's not a chance in hell that I'd do it. Because I was so scared of, like, people, like, also, people don't get jokes on the internet. Mm, There's people yeah. that just go in there. Yeah. And particularly being being a lady, as you may have picked up from the sound of my voice and my name <laughs> and everything I do. Uh, the internet sometimes, not very nice. Not no, very nice not. to ladies. Um, and I was petrified that I was just get bullied. But after part, like posting a couple of clips, I was like, oh, this isn't scary. People mm. are actually really nice. And they actually like this stuff and then so it built and built and then tiktok was tiktok changed the game tiktok, oh, TikTok has gone huge yeah. with comedy has me addicted i was like i can't see a future where i don't put stuff out mm. regularly because like i one of my videos got like I, this i feel like i'm tooting my own horn here but got like a million views and Damn. i was like that's crazy Insane. yeah, yeah. And I'm like trying to even conceptualize that number of people in a room. You're like, you See, can't, that's bigger like, than the civic room. Yeah. You've exactly. Done it. You've done it. <laughs> the civic theater. You, oh, oh, the you, know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's 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 like more than 10 days of Wembley. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you put it Wild. into context that way. Yeah. And yes, there were a bunch of people commenting, women aren't funny. Get <sighs> back in the kitchen. That, that bullshit is the yeah. most annoying thing, isn't it? It's like. I don't really find uh, female comedians funny. And you see it so often. Mm. You do see it. And it's such bullshit. Oh, every single video, every single video yeah. I post, yeah. without fail, there will be at least one or two. And what I started doing uh, was, <laughs> I don't know if this is, my manager said don't do this, but I, I think it's funny, is well, as soon as someone posts it, I just pin it to the top. Uh, <laughs> so anyone else that comes in there being like she needs to know that i and they see it and they're like oh don't worry about it <laughs> yeah yeah oh, well i think that's smart because it's just like if you're gonna say something right you're just making them you know holding them accountable for what they've said yeah the, the other thing as well don't read the comments i get so, oh. we, we we released a music video not long ago and for like every like and you know people oh, i love this and whatever there was this guy, and I, I can see his face. I can see his face, and I don't know him. I don't know if he was having a bad day, but I seen it, and I was like, fuck that guy, you know? And it's not... Yeah. He, people just like to shit on things. You, you, that's the, the unfortunate thing. You can't win everyone over. Yeah. Ever. 
mm. and especially being being a female in comedy because that's just the, the age old thing of all oh, women aren't funny. You yeah, know? it's boring. And like I have, it's take only recently have I learned to not care about that stuff mm. and just be like, what if you don't think women aren't funny? That's fine, but you're missing out on fifty percent of the jokes that are happening in the world. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sucks to be you, buddy. <laughs> Do you think like that's just the drunk heckler, but online, like, yes, yeah, oh, for sure. I yeah, think it's like <laughs> bottle of brandy in the morning, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just like, oh, <laughs> you know, just, just, just swinging shit and you know, just, just being negative for the sake of you know, oh, yeah, just someone feeling small in their life and seeing someone doing something and they're like, no, I, yeah. I need to feel bigger than you for a second. Um, yeah gonna comment that you suck and you're like oh, <laughs> buddy i wish you all the best i wish you all the happiness in the world and that <laughs> i hope this is the last comment you ever leave and <laughs> that you find happiness have you noticed um since coming back from those two years that never existed um hecklers hecklers are the same or they've changed a little bit maybe they've mellowed out a little bit People are heckling less in yeah. my experience because I because think they never had it for two years. So they're like, maybe I should not be an asshole. Yeah, maybe yeah. I should appreciate live performance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think also it helps because everyone's just that little bit socially anxious. Like they're just a little bit nervous to be outside. No one's really like feeling, you know, in their boots yet, ready to be like, mm. I've got something to say. Give it about six months and we'll get back to there. And I'll be like, Nature is returning. Yeah. Is, <laughs> nature is healing, everybody. Do you guys yeah. get hecklers as musicians? Oh, no. I, I've, had a, I've had a couple of like homophobic comments thrown at me before. But if you see me on stage, you'd understand, you know. <laughs> Jackie wears the tightest pants he can find and like, <laughs> wants to wore a cape. But I, I remember someone was like shouting homophobic stuff and I was like, I just like got down. I was singing in his face. And actually we had this conversation when Pat was on. I was like, the heckler thing, it's different because if if I'm playing a gig and all those people are there to see the band, right? Mm. And I've got that those people anyway. So yeah. if someone brings their mate who's an arsehole, I can just, if anything I say is automatically hilarious. And I can <laughs> shut them down with it, even if it's not funny. Yeah. Cut them in half. When you're doing uh, like a, you know, just like a weekly comedy show where you're not advertised or whatever, I think sometimes people want to see the challenge mm. because they, they've they seen Jimmy Carr deal with hecklers and they've seen all these great comedians deal with hecklers. So they want somebody to say something just to see if you can cut it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They think they're helping every single time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, helping I'm your s- career, lady. That's what yeah. I, I like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every single time after, if you ever talk to a heckler after the show, mm. they're always like, oh, you and me out there. You and me doing a little double <laughs> act. And you're like, no, cunt, I've been preparing for years. I've been writing for years. You don't just get to show up and be a part of my <laughs> fucking act. <laughs> also as well, I love a heckler when it's a great gig. Like when yeah. it's like the audience loves you. You could do fucking anything. And they're like, mm. oh my God. And someone has the nerve to jump up and be like, I'm going to join in on this. Because it's so easy to shut them down and it yeah. makes it fun and it's different and it's easy. The worst heckles are, are when it's a bad gig and the audience agrees with the heckler. Mm. That's when you're like, oh, I have to really fucking pull my finger out my ass <laughs> to get out of this one. <laughs> so, Beck, do you have like a, like a, uh, I don't know, a manual for dealing with hecklers? Like if you wrote, you know, have you got a bunch of like go-to lines to kind of rebuttal with them? Oh, yeah, I definitely have a list in my head, but as soon as it happens, it goes out the window and it's just... Yeah. <laughs> you say the meanest Every thing. Man for the meanest, yeah. meanest thing on your mind. No, you can never get mean. Never get, like, unless, like, they're... Because I'm a girl as well. If I get really mean with someone, people don't vibe with it. Unless mm, it's, yeah. like, they've been going for ages and everyone wants them to shut up. Yeah. Um, But you still have to do it with a smile on your face. Like, if, you are, if I say something really mean, I have to be like, you are big. Such a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, um, my usual one is like to ask questions. I think that's the easiest way to make someone feel mm. stupid because they're never saying they're never saying a better punchline than what you've got. Yeah. Prepared. Like they're never they've never got anything behind it. And as soon as you just go, why'd you say that? And they're like, oh, oh, I didn't know I was gonna have to do a follow up line. And you're like, mm. that's right, bitch. You came to I'm, play. I'm <laughs> one comment. <laughs> yeah. that's all I've got 
What's yeah, the best yeah, tackle you've ever internet. had? The internet. Have you ever had oh. any of that? Of sh- I don't want to. I don't want to end your career by you admitting, admitting <laughs> feet, yeah. But no, have you ever I had d- anything that just went? Oh. Oh. <laughs> any <laughs> comic yeah. that thinks that they haven't been bested by an audience or yeah. bombed mercilessly, they're not a real comic. Yeah, um, okay. The worst one that fucking got me was, uh, and it also motivated me as well. I was doing a gig uh, in the Central Coast somewhere. And it was Sydney Comedy Festival Roadshow. So all the fucking amazing comics on the lineup. And I got up and uh, started doing my jokes. And then this woman who'd seen me somewhere before started saying my punchlines. Oh, no. Before I said them. Oh, no. no. And there was no way. I like like tried to go over and be like, shut up. But this is the thing is my set wasn't going well that night. So the audience was kind of like, yeah, you'd suck a little bit and we're going to let this lady bully you. Oh, my God. <laughs> On stage and eventually just got to a point. I was only doing five minutes. Thank God. I don't know how I would have done longer. But I kept trying to, like, think of new jokes or a different joke that I might not have done. But I was so anxious to be like, what if she knows this one? I'm just going to be bested again. And it yeah. got to a point where, like, I I said, like, I think I called her a bitch. And <laughs> the crowd didn't like that. And I was like, well... That's my time, guys. I've got to go. And I I need you on the drive home. Wrote a whole new set. Yeah. It motivated me like crazy. Beck, oh, what, so did, what would have happened if you were like, oh, hey, lady, am I doing the show or are you? Like, you know what I mean? Do you want to come up and tell my jokes? Oh, you or, should have given the microphone. Oh, should have given the microphone. Yeah, that, oh, that would have been great if I thought of that in the moment. But I was so deeply embarrassed. That's the most annoying thing about hecklers as well is if they best you. You're not just like, oh, well, move on. You think about it every week and you're like, what if I'd I like that? the idea what of being like, done that? everybody, this is yeah. Judy. She's my understudy. She's going to finish the show now. <laughs> yeah, Thanks, get Judy. on up here. Think I say in five minutes, she says in four minutes, 30 seconds. Go on, yeah. Judy, get up there. I hate that lady. <laughs> oh, she's oh, the worst. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't bet. been keen to go back to the Central Coast uh, oh. since, but I will. I will. I'll go anyway when they'll have me. <laughs> yeah, I think the Central Coast too is like, uh, you know, you've you, you've kind of got like that that hardcore, you know, Aussie Aussie, you know, Aussie crowd. Mm. Would you would you say that? Because like I feel like when when I've done some traveling up up north, you get to you get to you know the uh, Central Coast, and it just feels really really like you know 1980s australia True. yeah they, they're running footy shorts they let go a little bit they're still pretty good the central coast is like definitely a bit looser yeah. uh and they definitely let a lot more stuff fly than the inner city yeah. but i will say starting comedy in perth oh that's another that is another world away baby they are they are playing a different ball game out there oh, yeah, yeah. oh the minor town uh, yeah oh because i started out there and then when i moved to sydney I uh, actually had a friend take me aside and this is so embarrassing to admit, but she very politely was like, I love you. I think you're real cool. I want to be friends with you. But I have to say some of the words you were using, we haven't been using them for a very long time over here in Sydney. And I was like, oh, oh no, really? oh, yes. Really? And it was such a rude awakening because oh. I was just a dumb bitch from the suburbs. She's going I mean, to get cancelled. Oh, I'm so grateful for my yeah. friend to pull me aside like that because I could I could have just kept going on that path. I've been the most unlikable, you know, person and not realize what I was doing. So what's 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 Sydney like? Because I imagine because there is a lot of like backpack at well, it used to be with, yeah. and tourists and you days. know like yeah, the majority on Sydney side. You know what I mean? It's people like me who moved over, <laughs> but um. <laughs> Welcome. Do you find that different then to playing that kind of audience? Because surely people's limit on what they find funny and what they find acceptable is different in yeah. any like if you're playing a city in the city and then you're playing in a manly, surely that's two different vibes altogether. Absolutely. I'm sure Pat's spoken about this because Pat is the backpacker whisperer. He okay. I have <laughs> never seen someone destroy it as hard continually in front of backpackers mm. as Pat Doherty. Because like a look because it's English isn't everyone's first language. So like they're not gonna if you have longer like intricate jokes, like they're not gonna get them or they're gonna mm. take like a bit longer to get them. Um, so like going out to like Manly and Kuji as well, they're very heavy backpack areas, but it's a great challenge because it goes to show it's like, are your jokes just working in one part of Sydney City? And is that where you want to gig 
for the mm. rest of your life yeah, or do we want to go around the world? Like, mm. so it's an excellent barometer. And I think it's all the backpacking is always a lot more fun because it's always a lot more about like the vibe than the actual, like, Oh, that was the clever joke. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's all about like playing with them and meeting them at their level. And it's like a fucking, yeah. it's a fun challenge. And they're always also like way looser and very fun to hang out with. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> and what, a, Hey Beck, what about Melbourne? What's, what's, what's the difference between Melbourne and Sydney? Uh, I uh, have a weird vendetta against Melbourne. I, yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. If you're from Melbourne and you listen to this, I'm sure you're great. But I, I never have fun down in Melbourne. I'm just yeah. always so anxious. And it is very much that like t- clever joke. You got to have a clever joke with a clever story. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting and theatery. And it's kind of like, it's a different challenge. Uh, and if you like that sort of thing, Melbourne is, is the city for you. But for me, I'm like, oh, no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to be funny. That's the, that's the goal at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when I was down, uh, when I was down there, I got the vibe that, you know, that, that I suppose Melbourne's a great city for me for music but i don't w- wasn't sure about comedy at the time because i was like everybody here like that's around these kind of arty parts everyone's kind of we've got this hipster thing going and i was like is this gonna work does it work down here i think it's harder down in melbourne as well oh excuse me <clears throat> that is last night's fun coming back up um, <laughs> <laughs> i think like because everyone's like a little more PC, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think there's definitely, you know, mm. places and times and all that's very important. I think you can kind of get caught up. They get a bit caught up in their head about what they should say rather than mm. what's funny. And I think that holds them back a little bit mm, yeah. because they're all kind of scared of like, oh, what if someone, what if someone cancels me or what if someone tweets about me or I, oh, the worst thing to happen to a comedian is to end up in a group chat to end up in a group chat of other comics talking smack about you because mm. that's oh mm. ugh, ugh. that's yeah we should go surely down. surely comics don't go after each other i should hope not anyway oh yes they do they're really? all, we're really? awful you evil bastards Redkins. yeah really? I, I think like if it's someone who's not a comedian trying to take down a, a comedian yeah. we'll all band together and be yeah. like fuck you if it's an Comedian on comedian, that's what people start picking sides and stuff. I think as well, like lockdown has made us like, we're not seeing each other as often. Mm. So like, you're just kind of getting people's perception through the internet and like people are a bit like disconnected and it's a bit icky at the moment, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I think also it's, I mean, let, let's be real, talking smack is pretty fun sometimes. So it I is, think- but not, not like going after each other. Yeah, yeah. like I, going I was- after each other's careers yeah. yeah i i was listening to andrew schultz the other day and he had a take on this and he said uh ape ape should not kill ape you know what i mean like you you know yeah. you should and that's one thing that i've been jealous of you guys as as comedians is that you guys have you know done really well by all kind of working together and really helping each other like, so I, we like thought this, this, yeah this me, it seems so, i need you to know talking really smack well. very different to cancelling someone two different things i wasn't like okay. come on guys okay okay <laughs> We believe you. Is the is it is Who's it getting cancelled right now? That's what I want to know. It's you, Jack. It's you. Why am I getting cancelled? Time. It was me. <laughs> no, I could never. Please don't. So, Beck, can I tell the story of a uh, of, of my first experience of seeing you before? Yes. Okay. I don't know this. I don't know what you're about to say. Okay. <laughs> um, let me set the scene. Do, 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 do. It's the week before Christmas. COVID is running rife everywhere. Sydney could go into lockdown. What does Jack decide he wants to do? Go to a comedy night in Potts Point. It was a Wednesday. It was a Magic Mike comedy night. Oh, oh right? my God. Okay. And, yes. and it was the weirdest experience ever. I love stand up, right? I love going stand up. Not this one. Not this mm-hmm. one, though. It was just, <laughs> we were all in there, all sat next to each other. Like, you know, it's like, little, it's like, it looks a bigger room, but it's like, they go, oh, squeeze, squeeze. They squish everyone down yeah, the front. Right Massive room. All right the seats squished together. And I was like, sat on people's knees and I was there with my missus and I was like, make sure you leave your mask on. Okay. We're going to have to leave our masks on. But it was just, it was just, it was just so eerie because mm. we knew we were going away and it's like Christmas is coming and you're like, 
We're going. This is this is how we get it. This this is COVID. Yeah. Being in a room without many people, I was like, this is COVID. Watching then, some of Sydney's most average comedians. Well, um, and Alex, that's how he's going. Alex, yeah. Alex, uh, I believe you know Alex quite well, don't you? Alex Milinkovic. Alex Milinkovic. He was he was my housemate and lover and partner for life. Yeah. <laughs> housemate, <laughs> love it. It's one way to share the rent. Um, yeah. He was he would would they call it MC in compare? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. MC. Compare. Um. But he, so he, he opened the show and you could tell he was a little bit like. Oh, this is a weird audience. This is, mm-hmm. this is not a good audience. And then there was only a couple that are re- There was a guy who came on and he was doing like crazy impressions. He was like, Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, what was Sam his name? Campbell. Yeah. yeah he was He's insane. insane. He's so re- fucking really, funny and weird. Really funny. Like, I, I couldn't. It was that laughter that was just like <laughs> pouring out to me. Yeah. Can and I tell you the craziest thing and before we get a. Oh, 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 oh. I'll tell you something about Sam, which is crazy. He's so. Why? If you don't know who Sam Campbell is, look up a video of him now. So weird, so wild, so mm. wacky, so funny. He uh, has continually won awards for being Australia's best comedian. Really? And you, yes. Yeah. I could see like, he was hilarious though. Yeah. Melbourne Comedy Festival. He uh, won, uh, yeah, best comic, I think a couple of years in a row. Like, really? yeah. 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 And you would, people are like, what? No, that he, guy, he but was, he is he was, undeniable. He He's undeniable. And his brain, the way you could see his brain going through the motions, even when he was up there, and I was like, oh, we are witnessing something. My missus is like, I don't, I don't really know what to think about this. Yes. I was like, <laughs> he is funny. Yeah. He is, he, you he, don't know how he comes up with uh, it. You don't know how it comes together. You're like, are these even jokes or are they just rambling? But every single gig he destroys undeniably and you don't expect it. And it's so like just, it's a completely different brand of, comedy that anyone's on. doing he comes on and he looks like quite a timid little he looks like a 12 year old boy a little boy a little boy <laughs> that's what i was gonna say he looks like he's just said mom i've done my own work we're gonna go and do some some jokes now and that's then a great sam campbell impression killed it yeah he absolutely killed it he broke you guys the, the crowd was so weird tense. night oh, yeah weird night and and you got up and i remember i remember you you literally got up and you're like, had a couple of jokes, and then you're like looking around the room and you, you just, you kind of knew you're like, mm, this ain't gonna be one of those nights. Yeah, <laughs> because nobody, it was that eerie. You'd think we were going to watch a public execution, not yeah. a comedy night. It was so weird. But you were the, you, you and that guy and and I obviously MC. It was like a shining light about it because it was so weird. Mm. But you made it, you know. A little bit oh. less weird for the time on. Thank you. Which, I was, which yeah. I needed because it that was it was a weird time, though. It just got to the point where you had like I saw Sam just getting in their faces and angry at them, and I was like, okay, that's how you do it. You just got to yeah. get up and be like, this is funny, and they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> all right, I guess it is. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. What a weird gig to see me at. Um. And yeah, that was a weird mm. ass night i remember just like my opening joke was like i was so mad that we had to check in because i was like we're just gonna get an update tomorrow i'm just yeah. gonna get that red alert being like you might be dead and i was like that was i was like i'm just gonna say that i'm just gonna get it off my chest when i go out on stage yeah. and tell everyone and everyone in the off. room went it's so true it's like, <laughs> I'm oh, I'm gonna die. we're yeah. trapped mm. <laughs> <laughs> those wow. must be those must be good gigs though to to go on and like especially getting back into it to yeah. know it's weird and everyone knows it's weird <laughs> well everyone's doing the best you know what i mean yeah we were it's... trying to like assume the characters they used to be pre-lockdown <laughs> i used to find this funny you know like yeah, and yeah this type of person who likes this comedy and and then people's insecurities and everything just showing in front of them yeah. I really, it was it was it was just it was the strangest night of comedy I've ever been at. <laughs> I can't believe you invited me on the podcast after watching that set. No, but I really, I really liked it because I knew different environment, different <laughs> terrified people in the audience. It was a good set. It was yeah. just the people were all like tense as hell. It was as if people knew, right? People bought tickets, people went, people were, yeah, we're here, we're going out. We don't care about this COVID. We're just gonna go out anyway. And then the sat there and they were going, why are you making Why are we us here? Be here? I didn't think I thought they would cancel it. Because in the lead up to that gig, mm. like everyone two weeks beforehand just dropped every gig, dropped yeah. off the books. And yeah. I was like, that's yeah. fine. 
I'm ready for a break for Christmas. Always, there's always never any gigs over the Christmas period anyways. Mm. Um, and just for some reason, Anthony Skinner, who runs that room, who is the craziest man I've ever met, but he's a fantastic booker and he loves the shit out of comedy. Yeah. He was like, no, we're going to push through. We are going to persist. Mm. And I yeah. was like, okay, fuck it. I mean, I'm addicted to the shit. So I guess I'm going to show up because why not? There's Go nothing else it. to do why at not? the moment. Now, Beck, while we're talking about like persisting and going ahead with the show and also we're talking about like, uh, you know, weird and, um, you know, wonderful gigs. Last week we tried to we tried to get you on the podcast and we really wanted you to have the really wanted, you know, to do it last week and have you on the podcast. But, you know, I had to, all of a sudden I got called in to do a bunch of stuff and we were like, shit, we really, you know, we'd like, how can we make this work? And uh, me and Jack, we we I think we spoke to Pat Doherty for we're too gonna, long. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna let this out. Oh, I think we should. I think it's oh, tell oh, me, tell we, me. We let the cat out me. of the bag. Oh, Jack, oh. Oh. Why not? Go on. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So okay. so we we did the podcast like a couple of nights before we were supposed to do your one last weekend with Pat Doherty, and I was telling him, oh, you know. We, we've got this one coming up with Beck. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to Beck do Jarlwood, it. Beck Jarlwood, he said. Beck <laughs> Jarlwood. And, uh, and, and, I, and I was telling him, you know, about, you know, I got called into work. And, and then I said to Pat, you know what? Do you reckon I could say, you know, do you reckon you could, pl- you know, do an impression of me? And he said, I reckon I could. So we were going to almost have Jack come in with this and and see and have pat doherty play me and see how long it took you to notice with like are you, are you doing this right now is this no. like a green screen and pat, pat welcome come to the show like, are you? <laughs> pat doherty. no he's um, not yet so the idea was gonna be is like the camera would be off for a bit and then yeah. we'd be talking and he'd just be like i'd be like talking as if he's hamish and yeah. then just like 20 minutes in just turn the camera on and see see if you even noticed I probably this is the I would probably notice, but I would be way too polite to say anything. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, you look like yeah. and sound like. I also because like that is a pat thing to do. That yeah. is such a I love Pat, but he's a snaky fuck. Well, well, I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you one of the reasons why it never happened. Pat texted me at I think it was 5 a.m. Saturday morning. He yeah. said, not happening, brother. And I went, understood. Understood. <laughs> We've all been there. I'm a little bit jealous, mm. but yeah, I, oh, it would have been, he said, would have been I think, crazy. He said, I think it'll take back 25 minutes before she knows. Probably, probably before I said anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Honestly, we could probably do the whole podcast. And at the end I would text Pat and be like, was that you? The whole time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a oh, bit that would have been funny. Well, thank you for not setting me up. I appreciate the forethought of trying to set me up in the first place. <laughs> I don't. Uh, the thing is, if we would have done it, I, I can imagine you turning around me and like, why the fuck would they do that to me? <laughs> All no, the people. I would get it. That's exactly what Pat would do. Pat, I, uh, Pat is will go to all kinds of lengths to just try like do a small prank or just like mm. mess you up for like no reason. Like I'll call someone who I don't think knows Pat remotely whatsoever, and he'll answer the phone and pretend to be them for so long that it gets to a point where we're like, Pat, put the other person on the phone. Yeah. Got the bit, mate. I'm busy. Yeah. Look, yeah, we character. were just kind of going in for it and going a lot, running along with it because like for the, we've almost done like a hundred episodes now. And, uh, you know, well done. I, I think I've been in all of them. So it would be nice to pass the mic to, 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 to Pat. And I thought it would be a good, I don't know. I thought it could either go two ways. It's either going to be a train wreck or it's going mm. to be quite funny and pulled pulled off well. See, Hamish, you could have had Pat and then Beck, you could have had that lady who was telling all your jokes for you. Yes. And you oh both could God. have had on the studies on. Oh, just a back and forth between this crazy woman and Pat Doherty. <laughs> yeah, that's now I'd like to see that. No, have, you got, have you got a close group of friends then in comedy? Like a, a group that pretty much does the circuit together? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got like, uh, there's people that you gig together really often mm. with, and then you have the people who are like, you're like close pals that you tell everything to. And annoy I've got the my shit colleagues out of. and I've got other people. Yeah. But Pat's definitely, Pat's part of that inner circle. Mm. And yeah. like, yeah, he's someone, cause again, he, he was running the first ever gig that I did with Billy in Sydney. Oh, so he, okay. 
he gave me my first shot and, and it was in a, in a room in Manly that was full of backpackers as we've mentioned. Mm. So yeah, I've known Pat for years. He's really good friends with uh, Alex, my partner. Um, so yeah, he's, he's fucking wonderful. And then of course, like, I think, yeah, Pat, Oh, else? I feel weird just risk listing my friends. <laughs> like, these are the ones that are G's. The rest of them go fuck it. <laughs> at, least, at least you've got friends you can list. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a long list. I tell you that much. There's probably about three people. I think um, it's better having a little core of core group, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Who, you have like you a like? core group and then you have like heaps of people that you're like friends with. Mm. But like drinking if, buddies. Drinking yeah. Buddies. If you ever ask them to help you move house, you guarantee that message is being left on scene. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Beck, a quick question. Did you did you watch our episode with Billy Darcy? I listened to it. I didn't watch it. Oh, that's all right. Well, I'm, I'm glad you didn't watch it, to be honest, because uh, our editor, Hugh, um, you know, he was a big fan of Billy Darcy, went on TikTok, became became a big fan over lockdown. And then he said, I want to do I want to be in this Billy Darcy one. So he's standing next to me. But the whole time he, he shaved his head, he had a Britney Spears moment during lockdown and shaved his head and sat next to me <laughs> and looks like he's the bouncer of this interview <laughs> and it looks so strange it's the funniest <laughs> episode like, like visually that's so funny but also so like i mean professional they're like damn they've hired a man to stand here we, we need security the whole time we need security. <laughs> yeah <laughs> now back tell us about your podcast yes i'm like the ladies guide to do cinema yeah um, because i've watched a few videos and i feel a little bit insulted but i really liked it as well are you are you a movie guy I am a movie guy, yeah. What movie do you force uh, people to watch? Or, t- I mean, sorry, not force. So Strongly there's a, recommend there's the a film. See. There's a film. Uh, it's called Danny Collins, right? And it's Al Pacino. And Al Pacino is like wow. 75. And he's like, ooh, ah, Al Pacino, but he's older and cooler, right? And he's a singer. And he's kind of like Neil Diamond. And he gets a letter from John Lennon that he should have got in the 70s. And if he'd have got the letter, his career would have been different, right? It's a brilliant film. Brilliant film, right? That does sound I want you to review sick. it and shit all over it. That's what I want you to do. <laughs> oh, I- absolutely. That, sound, that sounds exactly down our alley because the concept of the podcast is mm. we watch all the movies that dudes have taught us we have to see, which for ladies, it's a lot. It's a very long mm. list. I think our list at the moment is 400 movies long. The Die Hard one is so funny. <laughs> It's so, oh. it's so hurtful, but it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mean to be hurtful. Like this is the no, thing is that like, no, we just I don't. I mean, look, sometimes I, I, <laughs> I get a little bit too passionate in mm. a negative way, <laughs> <laughs> but we just don't know. So it's fun to just be like, I don't know. What does this mean? Why is this guy important? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> was that, was that a lockdown project? No, we've been going for three years now. Really? Um, yeah. How it started was because uh, me and Alex Jay are best friends in the real world, not just mm. on the podcast. Uh, and we were kicking back a bunch of rosés and she just started seeing this guy and he needed, needed her to see Lord of the Rings. She was like, oh, with- no. Yeah. Not even gone past the point of like dating where it's still like we are like making out all the time and it's hot and heavy. He wanted to break that up with a two and a half hour movie oh, about freaking dragons I, I piss off all the rings fans yeah i'm gonna oh, come say, on like yeah. and she was oh, just like why no. why is this a thing why does this ha- why is this not the first time this has ever happened to me like we're having fun get to the movies later why does this need to be like you know a test that i need to pass in order to keep getting that dick yeah. like yeah. It's not fair. That's like, the I don't... most ridiculous thing yeah. ever, though, yeah. to be like, oh, does this girl really want to get in her pants? Really want to yeah. get in her pants? Is she seeing all of the rings? <laughs> oh. And you know what? How, 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 how to Thank him the day if she ain't seen it. Oh. oh, it's mad. Jesus. Do you know, that's <laughs> the only series, off. like, I think I've never, I, I can't get into. Like, I really can't. Like, I remember mm. there's just, I've got so many friends that get so culty about it. Like, they're like, oh, Lord of the Rings. And they start, I can't do it. Like, I, I get yeah. Harry Potter, right? I get all the others. But, like, that's the only series I can't do. I it's even very specific. The Hobbit, and I was like, this is, I can't do it. Sorry, it's a guys. type of person, though, isn't it? Who, who, who yeah. Who Lord of the Rings. Yeah. yeah, but this is the thing. There's all different, like, all a lot of dudes, and I think this is just how you guys were brought up to bond is being like, 
these are the things I like. And oh, if you, if you like it. them. Stop it, because you've got me thinking. Have you, like, <laughs> have you done Bad Boys 2 before? Because that film yes, was like my favourite Yes, we have done Bad Boys 2. You know the that worst moment in that? One. The worst moment in that film? It's a great film, right? It's like, Mike Lowry, great film, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of the film, she throws the gun, right? Next to, uh, what's it? Me, Johnny Tapia, that guy, right? And she throws, she throws the gun. And she goes, um, I, he goes, pass me the gun. He goes, I will, right next to the mine. And she throws it and it blows up, right? And for two hours, I love that film, right? And every time that bit happens, I go, fuck this film, man. Fuck <laughs> this film. Yeah, there's all like, oh, that was like the ending of the new <laughs> Matrix movie. That's quite therapeutic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just like get now there and be like, this is what I truly think. And it's, mm. at the start, so nervous because we didn't have any, this thing is like we were so underconfident about what we knew about movies and film because I think that like, you know, like traditionally gals aren't raised to be like have hard opinions on stuff and they're like, oh, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So it's just for me, it's everything's good. Everything's mm. fine. And I never really like hated a movie until I started watching more and more of them. And I was like, oh, mm. no, like I I didn't sign to know what I like and feel confident. And it's really like it's really helped with like conversation socially because is like, this what? is this the biggest you know like when you're pissed off at your partner right and there's just something that drives you and say is this your way of getting back at alex is this you being like yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah oh no no leave your socks out yeah that's fine that's fine now let's shit on your favorite movie it is that a little <laughs> bit that it is, is that a little bit definitely not <laughs> alex alex is a sweet angel and he's yeah. never oh no he did force me to watch something what was, what was it? it? Oh, he spent a long time drawing, writing out a list of how we were going to watch all of the Avengers in the correct order. Oh. Um, that, but also that was two years into doing the podcast. So I'm like, we're going to do it. Like, you don't need to rush me. Also, I'm the movie person in this relationship. Yeah. You don't tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's taken back the power, but definitely, yeah, pre- it is kind of a little jab back at like a bunch of exes. That's how it feels. Yeah. Like, That's how it feels. You're having this thing. You're having a great time. I was having a great time with all these guys. And then they're like, but let's watch this horrifically violent movie. Mm. And now you're like, oh, this is kind what, of killed the what, mood what, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to give you a hand job and you got in the way of yourself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, while we're while we're on the Avengers uh, topic, right? Like, I think we've oh, Jack. Have you seen the Avengers? You probably you, you have, yeah. I'll be honest. I loved the Iron Man films, right? Yeah, I loved them. Mm. Uh, shit on them if you like, Beck. I don't care, but I, I did like them. And then when the Avengers, my issue is there's just too many. It's too yeah, too many. And I don't like the whole. I'm a superhero. You're a superhero. Boom, boom, boom. Big fights. Big fights. Big fights. And then at the end, you know, like oh, they do all like the superhero landing where they land on the fist, mm-hmm. and then yeah. they win at the end. It's like I like superhero films when they don't have the big fight scenes. Right. That's yeah. all, that's an interesting. That's why take. I like that's Batman. Different. That's why I like Batman is like because it's not like him punching him and he like flies through a a fence and then he flies back at him and the he's throwing fire and shit at him like you know. Don't insult my intelligence. Come on. Well, the Joker was like that. That was a that was and that was yeah. that was brilliant. Like that mm. was really dark. I was like, oh yeah. Oh. I also I have just spied Hamish that you have a very large fear and loathing poster yeah, in does. the background there. Is that yeah. one of your favorite movies? Um yeah, look, I, I, I like the I like the concept when I was a kid. I was like, oh, this this is cool. This makes you know like uh illegal activities not seem quite so bad and also yeah. i love the soundtrack shit on it, no, i, I want to say now to i'm not gonna shit on it, it. i'm not okay. gonna shit yeah. on it right here right now but i will say don't listen to our episode about it then protect yourself <laughs> oh, look, preserve our friendship <laughs> look to be honest I, I like that i like that the the movie I, I you know the movie the movie is a wacky movie the soundtrack yeah. of this movie is great. And I like I like how Johnny Depp tried to go into it and did a good job like taking him off. But the structure and the timeline of this movie and the is and the book is just it's just a fucking head fuck. It's 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 yeah. worse than pulp fiction. Mm, I think that's like a, a very that's a genre movie that doesn't jibe with me. I don't think it's a bad genre, but for me, yeah. it's like that movie was just so 
it did a great job of making you feel everything like, that the character was feeling. Like you were on drugs. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But uh, for me, I was just like, oh, it's too much. It's too crazy. Alex, actually, my partner, he watched it um, on acid and he wow. he did not have a good time. He was like, I wasn't oh. right in the head for like a yeah, week after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a good movie to do that with. But yeah, <laughs> I don't think you should watch any films on drugs like that. Mm. I, I, I watched them. I was in Amsterdam a few years ago and I watched Limitless after taking shrooms, right? And you know the scene where he like he goes up and he turns the lights on and he goes, I was blind and now I see. That like happened to me with the trip like the exact same time. Oh shit. And it was the worst trip ever. And then I don't know why. Have you ever seen the film Lord of War with Nicolas Cage as a No, but that's on our that. list. That's on our that. list. It's a terrible film. And he's like, he's like an arms, an arms dealer. And I was watching that and I was just like cowering to myself and I was like I'm never doing this again once again sorry mum now I've got a weird story to tell about this I know I have a friend and um one one day he decided to take LSD and watch the founder two years later he's now very rich so I don't know oh. if it was a good move or a bad move you know <laughs> that's a way to manifest baby it's the guy who started it's McDonald's Michael Keaton yeah uh yeah who, and he's playing the guy who started McDonald's and he's very, what does he do now? He sells cocaine. Of course he's, of course he's, of course he's rich. I'll tell you off the, I'll tell you off the, off the, off the, uh, at the, the end. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Definitely sells drugs. <laughs> no, he's a bit more legitimate than that, but, um, I don't want to get him into any trouble. So, okay. So what, okay. what, what, what's your favorite film to shit on though? Oh, what was, what was your favorite one? What film did you watch that you've heard so many good things about? And then you went, no, 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 no. Oh, easily high fidelity. Uh, that like, and also this ties in because this is a music podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm sure you guys have met those people that are like, my taste in music is the only taste in music. Mm-hmm. And you can go fuck yourself if you don't like it. <laughs> Oh, and like that's like yeah, and it's just that guy, and he's the hero of it, and just everything about it was like touched on all the points of our podcast of like things mm. that like set us off and make us so angry, and people love it. People are obsessed with. It. That's the one we got the most backlash for. Mm. People are like, "You didn't get it. It's satire," and I was like, "Well, it wasn't very good satire, and that's yeah. why I didn't get it." <laughs> Poor satire. Yeah. Ooh, satire. <laughs> You know what's one of the like the funniest movies I watched recently was that uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's called Lucy. And it's yes, with Scarlett movie. Johansson. Yeah, and this she becomes a, like a USB, and I was like, "What? Wait, what? <laughs> what is going on?" Yeah. That's like one of the movies I remember watching before we had this podcast, and I was like, oh, "I didn't like it, but maybe I'm wrong. Mm. Maybe I just don't know anything about movies." <laughs> I, for two days after that, I would think about that movie and just start giggling to myself. I was just like, that was the biggest letdown of all time. Like, mm. I, I was watching this movie and somebody told me it was shit. So I was like, okay, I'm going to watch it for myself. And then I go watch it. And then and then I, I, I was like, I had to like turn the TV off and sit there and like think about what I just witnessed. And then That's I was like, was see myself laughing. Have you, have you reviewed The Godfather? Oh, here oh, we go. Funny you bring that up. Because I I I think all men feel the same about the Godfather, don't they? Yeah. Tom I, says it best in You've Got Mail. He yeah. Loves, Wait, when does this Godfather. podcast come out, by the way? Uh, I think the Godfather came out before this comes out. I think you're right. Yeah. Why are you reviewing it? Are you reviewing the Godfather? Yeah. So we're doing it this week because it's the 50th anniversary. Oh, wow. It's our most requested movie of all time. I'm sure it is. Because Oi. it's we're recording the episode on this Tuesday comes out Wednesday. Um, so we are finally. We're so scared. We're so nervous because it's so beloved, and we're so scared. What if we don't yeah. like it? This we upset end. everyone. This is, this is the end, Beck. Hey, this Beck. This is the end. And Jack, I just want to insert. Uh, I want to give you a bit of back knowledge here. So Jack is from is from Liverpool in the UK, but the but his movie preferences. You would think he was you know from Sicily or somewhere. He's just got this weird thing <laughs> for things, mafia and uh, anything you know, Al Pacino. <laughs> oh, uh, he's great. Al Pacino is great. 
I say that like I don't Godfather. believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit on the Godfather. Jack, do you think the Godfather's too long, man? Like, so like if if you when I watched it the first it, by time, the way. I remember just thinking the wedding scene, man. Like it just goes for so long. And then the rest of the I am honored that you would invite me here today on the day of your world's wedding day. And I offer you, may your may your first grandchild be a masculine grandchild. Yeah, it is too long. The whole point, but the reason I like those films is if I'm flying to the UK or vice versa, it's it's nine hours, boom, gone, free Godfather films. Because <laughs> it's like that's, three that's hours like long, it. right? Each of them are like three hours long. God, it so is, it is the, I don't film, like a long it is, movie. It is long. It is long. It is yeah. very long. It I gotta watch it. To, I'm watching it that. tonight for the podcast, so oh, wow. I'll watch it on okay. 1.25 speed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just, just skip the when when you just skip the until insult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to watching that. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll I'll tell you my thoughts as soon as I watch it and Please let you do. know first. I'm dying to know. I'm dying to know. It's regarded just as like, the greatest film of all time. Yeah, it's one of those movies Beck that's Charles like had seen it and found until all the I flaws. came in and I said the honest truth that we were all yeah. thinking. And was, I'm probably gonna love it. Just think, we don't hate every single yeah. movie. Mm. Otherwise, we wouldn't. There's no way we would have made it to three years because we would have just been like mm. we can't do this to ourselves every week. Let me tell you the way. Like the way scene in The Godfather. Okay. Uh, Don Corleone is Marlon Brando is there and he's like buying fruit and he's like oh, I like the fruit oh, oh, oh. and then that's a great Brando he gets shot spoiler he, he, he survives he's in every film he's still alive today anyway they're shooting him and the, you know like in film the way gunshots have gotten better I feel like over over, yes. over time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 and he's getting and I, every time I see that, I go, oh, take that out, will you? Just change it, will you? <laughs> Re-edit it. All on. You're supposed to be the best ever at this. Come on, man. <laughs> but this is the thing. Is like, I feel like I feel like I know that scene that you're talking about. Mm. And I know the horse head in the bed. And I know mm. on the day of my daughter's wedding, blah, 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 blah. I knew that um, Marlon Brando had like con buds. Or was yeah, it Al Pacino had con buds in his cheeks? Yeah. Yeah, I know all of this. I've never fucking seen this. This is from mm. people telling me about it. And I'm like, yeah. this is, yeah. So probably oh, going to no, I, I actually, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you find something wrong in it. Because, you know, then I can find it as well. And I can be <laughs> no, I don't. The point of the podcast isn't to fucking ruin everyone's favorite things. Mm. Although I think a lot of people feel that way, and sometimes we do that on accident. I think it's the point of it is to be like, hey, these movies that everyone is like, it's a classic. You have to love it. Of being like, yeah, but a, the list of classics I think is decided by a big bunch of dudes who their mm. whole thing is watching movies, and I don't think that gals have a lot of skin in the game when it comes to reviewing movies um once so again yeah, the day sorry, that sorry, charlie's Mom. angels gets into the list of classic movies is the day that we can put this podcast to rest which, which one though which which the, charlie's angels oh uh, the you two th- not the new one the, the lucy, one that came lucy out Lou ones with uh, lucy Lou, drew yeah. barrymore cameron yeah. diaz and the first one and full throttle as well both yeah. classic yeah. films some of the best movies you'll ever see <laughs> i agree with that i i quite like those movies they did they take you on a little they're just fun you know and colorful and silly yeah. and there's yeah. no actual stakes because mm. everything is ridiculous and they're on wires the whole time just flying through the air doing things that you can never do in outfits that would be so impractical for the things they're doing i love it i love it yeah. <laughs> now beck can i ask a question right like what is your favorite stand-up special of all time Oh, that's a hard question. Um, uh, 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 I really love Chelsea Peretti's special yeah. um, on Netflix. I yeah. can't remember what it's called. One of the greats. One of the um, greats. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. 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 like it's a it's not a very well known special. It's very specific. If you're like not massive into stand up, I wouldn't go in as that as an entry point because mm. it's very wacky. It's very weird. It's her like also like, you know, kind of like taking the piss out of like traditional stand up and a lot of the people that are considered the great, she kind of like mocks them a little bit, but it's also like intercut with all this weird stuff that isn't usual for a stand up special. Like usually they just, you come out, you do a solid hour of jokes 
and fuck off. And everyone's like, that's it. That's how it's done. But she's got like all these weird, like uh, fake crowd shots intercut with it. Just like at one point she's like, sees herself in the audience dressed as a clown. Uh, and it's just, it's just like, it's very weird and silly. And I like mm. it a lot, but just for straight stand up, I think the best, the special that swept me off my feet and I wasn't expecting it to was Ali Wong's her special baby Cobra. Mm. Have you guys, do you guys know yeah. Ali Wong? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Is that the one where she's heavily pregnant in? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, I had no idea who she was, no idea. And the special was so fucking good and solid and just like, just it blew me away being like I don't know how do how do people not know who you are how Mm. have you been under the radar for this long and you come out with a special this fucking strong and yeah it just uh, it blew me away and I love it to this day and I love to go back and watch it and a new special as well that just came out is really 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 good do you think it helps if people already know who you are so like the Chelsea Peretti obviously she was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine G Mm. So like people, I watched it because of that. You know yeah. what I mean. So what I'm did already you think go- of it? I'm already going into it like Gina. I'm gonna enjoy this. Yeah, like, Gina. I'm going into it. But do you think that helps if you're going into it kind of like, say you've been in TV shows and people know who you are? Do you think people are then just instantly fifty percent more accepting of the, the special? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. If people are familiar with you, because they know mm. kind of like what to expect, and if they know who you are, and you're watching, like they're watching something of you the second time, they like you. So you don't have to do the work of being like, "Hey, I'm mm. really funny," and I know you don't believe it right now, but in five minutes, <laughs> you're gonna fully get on board. Like you don't have to do that work if they mm. already know you and like you. And mm. I think, yeah, I definitely with Chelsea Peretti special. If I didn't know who she was, I think I would be like what is happening here? <laughs> this is weird as fuck because you're familiar with the character, Gina. You're like, oh, yeah. this, yeah, absolutely. This makes so much sense. Mm. <laughs> Do you know um, what, uh, like when you were talking about that, Ali, or what Wong special, I think I, I've never been so nervous watching a special before because that one that you're talking about, I was watching that and I just had so much anxiety because she's such a small woman in that the, that yeah. one is so heavily pregnant. I was just like, Jesus, I was just hey, that sounds pull. a bit sexist. No, I was, no, I was such I was, a no. small woman. But she, so Jack, if you see <laughs> this, tiny you see, on such a big stage. No, no, no. But I mean, she just, I was scared she was going to fall or or something like that. And I was just like, I, I, I was no caring you. I felt, I felt more concerned about like, like, you know, her on the stage because she looked like she was about to, you know, go at any moment. Yeah. Yeah have the baby and she's wearing a dress too which i was like like that's brave that is yeah. fully pregnant wearing a, a dress my god anything could happen anything could happen at any point but i think that's what made it so great is like her if her show was and if the jokes were any weaker that would have made you just stress the whole time but the set was so good that halfway through i was like oh does, i'm not even thinking about the fact that she's pregnant mm. i'm not even thinking about the fact that she's you know probably in so much pain she's really constipated and needs to piss yeah. like she's just doing i know the feeling i know the yeah. feeling I, I just couldn't <laughs> concentrate i was sitting here like please be safe yeah I, I, that's the wild thing is like it usually people be like oh i'm so stressed i can't even watch it but it was so successful that mm-hmm. you're just like oh you can be pregnant and still do things for me i was like oh that's right you don't just lie down for nine months. Like you still have to go to work. You still have to do <laughs> these things. So I was like very, like that blew my mind, but I totally get the stress. I to- I definitely felt the stress mm, too yeah. of watching. Yeah. Is that the whole totally. like, not like nowadays for the, for the Netflix special or has it kind of moved on from that oh. still now? No, are you kidding me? I would kill everyone I knew to get a Netflix special. I would. <laughs> I'm glad we're <laughs> not that familiar dream. then. Yeah. <laughs> can i give you a netflix special i watched recently which let me down and then i'll give you i'll give yes. you one that was really good so i Absolutely. love i love theo vaughn but mm-hmm. i watched his recent special and i was let down by theo vaughn i was like i know you're funnier than this man like you're there's there was just something i think he was maybe because it's you know his first he was just a bit more held back and reserved but um i watched isaac butterfield's first best special and i think i was just 
laughing because I hadn't heard somebody be that wild and maybe maybe insane yeah. and I was like oh my god you know I have I have stories about both those comedians all right on a personal level so Thea Vaughn and I think I fucked up in this one I don't want anyone to think that I think I did uh, I made a good move here but I was like I I think this was about five years ago and uh I was still like pretty like I wasn't established or anything no one really knew who I was uh and I was just you know trying my best to make it in the world. And Theo Vaughn came to Sydney and he did the Emmore Theatre. Um, and a friend of mine uh, got asked to open for him. And at the last minute, Theo asked if he's like, hey, um, do you know anyone else like that could come open? He's like, my friend Beck, uh, she's killing at the moment. Let's get her on. So I got, this is like, the show is happening at seven. I got the message at 10 a.m. on the day. And it was from, not from Theo, it was from some other random comic who he was working with uh, just on Instagram being like, hey, can you do 10 minutes at the Enmore Theatre tonight? And I didn't believe him. I was like, this is a trap. This is not, there's no way that this is actually real. And I kept being like, hey, can I like give you my manager's number? Because also my manager is like, uh, you know, a man in his, mid thirties and no one's going to fuck with him. Whereas me, a gal in their early twenties, a bright eyed, bushy tail will do anything for the biz. I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make a good decision here. I can feel yeah. that I'm probably being tricked. This is way too good to be true. And so I was like, can I give you my manager's number and he'll sort this all out. And he was like, no, I don't want to deal with a manager. And so for me, I was like, red flags everywhere i was Mm. like no that's that's weird this is like this is how you end up in a green room and bad things happen and you're like no one knows you there and i was like oh i i die i would die i would die to perform at the end more with the avon but everything that just went on around it was so weird and creepy so i said no so i said freaking no yes i mean like we we have no idea what it's like being a woman Right. We, we, we have no, I am thankful to say I have no, I don't know. Right. Mm. But that must be a thing as well of security wise and everything that. Yeah. That's so. Because like I'd the, never, listen, think, I'd just never me... think I was getting a message. Oh, no, they're going to want to yeah. see me with my shirt off now. But like. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> women for women in the entertainment business. Oh, that's crazy. I could, I could, I can understand that. I can understand that. Mm. Yeah. It was so like, I, in hindsight, I'm like, oh, it probably was like, it would have been fine. Mm. But just like, he wasn't giving me like a lot of information about mm. like whether it was going to be paid, like what, like, like how it was going to run or anything like that. And he was like, really care. And I was just like, oh, I can't, like, yeah. I love comedy. I love comedy. But I also, I don't, I don't want to get kidnapped or like just like, <laughs> You know, well, like I just don't want to get yeah, into a yeah, bad know, situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, so look, would have been sick, you know, could have, would have, maybe should have. But yeah, in future, if you are wanting to book me for something and you're listening to this, give me details, give me a rundown. Be Let specific. me know that just you're not specific. a fucking creep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Isaac Butterfield, he, I used to gig with him uh, all the time, way, way back in the day. And I hope he doesn't mind me. I mean, he's probably not going to listen to this, but. Ouch. Uh, Ouch. <laughs> Thanks, Beck. No, he's busy. He's a millionaire. He's got a Netflix special. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He's probably not, he's probably working. No, nothing personal. I'm going to cold call the shit out of this man. <laughs> and send him links and be like, yeah, you better hear this. You better listen to I think this. it was, a, think it was an Amazon special, wasn't it? It, 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 it was not Netflix. Oh. Is it Amazon? I Amazon. Mean, yeah, I think so Amazon. Amazon. Regardless. Because if, yeah. if if it went on Netflix, I think I think too many people would have a whinge. Yeah, the weirdest thing about Isaac is he's the he comes out and he does all of this like very hardcore, like intense material. Mm. Nicest guy, so sweet off stage, so polite. Like some of the best manners that yeah. I've ever copped from another comic. <laughs> and so we used to do gigs all the time in Newcastle because that's where he's based. And again. Off stage, lovely, so personable, so sweet. And then we'll get up and just do like the most crook shit you've ever heard. That was like, <laughs> it's like really towing a line and audience like did not vibe with it. Like I saw him once get booed off stage 
into like had to like end his set early because people were just like get the fuck off oh, really? like I've never seen so much animosity yeah and then three months later he started doing YouTube videos and they've gone off and he's yeah. selling out to theaters. He's like, I think he's one of Australia's most successful comics at the moment. I think yeah. it's the Do consensus. you think maybe, yeah. maybe what he was trying to pour out, he hadn't quite figured out how people would take it yet. So maybe what he was doing was really good, but people just hadn't got around to understanding it yet. Yeah, I think he's, because he's a very specific taste of comedy. Yeah. Um, but I think he's kind of like an antithesis to like what the mainstream Australian comedy is at mm. the moment, which is like very polite, very cordial. Like no one's like got alpha energy. It's always very like this. I went to the shops and this silly little thing happened to me. Like it's very like lighthearted, accessible, like could go on the project. And I think uh, like Australia is like growing up a little bit when it comes to comedy and they want something a little bit, you know, you're seeing all these specials come out like we got access to Netflix and they're seeing all this like darker, more intense stuff. Mm. Like there's more variety and we're just not getting it from our media. So when Isaac came, people like, fuck yeah, this is someone's like going hard. Someone's not scared of not getting on the project. Like someone's not scared that they're not going to get nominated for an award at Melbourne comedy festival. It's just truly like, going hard and i think that's yeah why people flock to him and why he is really successful does anyone watch the project like honestly like oh, I don't know any- people in melbourne uh, my enemies <laughs> in melbourne are obsessed oh, with the project oh, they love oh, the project it's the worst can't say i've even heard of it <laughs> exactly that's how much relevance i think they hold now but um when I watched Isaac Butterfield's like special, I had to change my bed sheets the next day because I I bought like a like some. What? What? Well, li- listen, listen, listen. It would make more sense. I I I, I bought like. Cute, cute, cute. When you clip this, that's the clip. Yeah. That's the clip. <laughs> Look, I promise. I promise. I wasn't masturbating over Isaac. I, 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 oh, I, you I, have I, to go there. He's what a good-looking man. Is, that's just, fine. Just I will get it. But um, I I I like taken like a huge huge like mouthful of coke, and then he said something, and I just went <sighs> everywhere, like all over my room, and I just like scrubbed the carpet the next day, and like it was just a fucking mess. But um, yeah, because I it was just I didn't think he would go that like that go that far with things, and I was like fucking hell, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. Oh, that moment when a comic says something truly unexpected that you're like just swept off. You're like, oh, fuck, shit. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. I think that's, yeah, where the banging jokes lie. Oh, yeah. I was I, I was barely laughing in, in, my, in my bed of bubbles, so, you know. Was... I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, you have to change the bed sheets. Hey, I'm just <laughs> things so to say. Oh, things to say. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Coke is probably one of the worst substances to sleep on. Like, I think that's probably worse than crumbs. Stick into the bed. I don't like a sticky bed. (laughs) Nobody does. (laughs) Jesus. So, Beck, how how did you how did you start in comedy? Was you a funny kid, or was you a shy kid that would think I had something really funny to say then, but I didn't say it. I think if I'm being truly honest uh, with myself and you guys and the listeners, it's just I really loved attention. I was obsessed with attention growing up. Mm. But I have uh, two brothers and one of them um, had like pretty horrific ADHD, like real, Mm. real bad. So he needed the attention a little bit more than me and by God, he got it. And I was always so jealous because I was like, I'm funny too. I can be loud too. But you're just louder than me and that's why you get all the attention. And then through high school, like I really love drama. Mm. Um, but the feedback was always, oh, stop trying to be silly. Like take it seriously. And I was like, why would I? This is dumb. This is embarrassing. Mm. Getting up here, pretending like, you know, Shakespeare's going to watch this. Like, come on, let's have fun. And then I finished like after high school, I just kind of floundered around and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I never thought I would get into comedy. I went in like, I was a personal trainer for a minute. And then uh, I went to study a marketing degree and then I went to study, I dropped out of it hard and then went to try to study a nutrition degree, dropped out of that and just like had no, no idea what I was going to do. 
and deep de- deep denial that all I wanted was attention. And mm. <laughs> uh, in uh, a bit of a manic episode, there was a guy that I was seeing and it was his lifelong dream to be a comedian. And so I was like, so you stole manic it. no, I was manic pixie dream girling. And I was like, you know what we need to do is we need to go out right now and we need to go to a comedy club and you are going to do it. You're going to live your dream because stop being scared. Just live in the light. Like just (laughs) a total annoying bitch. And so we went out and we actually, you can't just go and be like, Hey, I want to do comedy tonight. You have to book Mm. in and stuff. Um, So he signed up and he's like, I'm really nervous. And I was like, well, I'll sign up. I'll do anything. Like, you know, we saw the open mic nine. I was like, that looks fun. Like, and they're pretty easy, to be honest. I reckon I could do that because when mm. you're in a manic episode, you think you can do absolutely anything. Anything. <laughs> and so, like, it was like we, it was like another month until we got on stage. And he'd, like, like planned out his set meticulously. He'd written every single joke. He knew what he was going to say. I had forgotten entirely that it was happening until the day. Mm. So I just showed up being like, fuck, I'd, I'll just tell it. I'll just say what comes out of my mouth. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, And he got up, he did pretty well. uh, And I got up and bombed. But hard. So surprising. Because you were so well equipped for it. (laughs) (laughs) I was one of those fuckers. It's like comedy's easy. Comedy's Mm. actually really easy. You just get nothing talking. And I got up, I was like, it's so much harder than Mm -hmm. that. It's an actual skill that you have to straight away conked me out of that manic episode so hard i was like oh no like that was that was brutal that was really Mm. really hard but i was like you know what i i want to go again i want to go again i want to actually try and so uh jumped up again and actually wrote jokes and actually had stuff planned and after that i was hooked i was like that this is what i want to do forever got a question without a doubt is this ex-boyfriend, does he still do comedy? Yeah, I was one of those. No. Oh. <laughs> no, oh, he's, he's married to a beautiful gal. They've built a house in Brisbane and they're living mm. a very quiet, happy life. And I'm very happy for him, but also a little bit smug that I was like, haha, I stole your dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he oh, loves Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Again, <laughs> Lord of the Rings fans don't oh. cancel that. I mean, we stopped seeing each other pretty shortly after, so he never got the chance to make me watch a movie. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, and eight years later, I'm here on the West Underground podcast Look at telling you, the story. Yeah, you wow. You're in the big room of the Civic last night. You're in the big room of your own yeah. night on the West oh. Underground. <laughs> you, you go in places, girl. You go in places. Yeah. Yeah, It's I. there's no way I thought I would still be doing this. It, like... If you if you had told me eight years ago, it's like, by the way, you're going to be doing the Civic Theatre and a, the Opera House and all this shit, I'd be like, you're a stupid bitch. Who are mm. you? Go back to the future. You're lying. <laughs> well, now you're, now you're hitting the big time, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, yeah, not, I've still got a long way to go, definitely, um, from where I want to be. But yeah, so far, pretty, pretty fucking fun, man. Yeah. In the process all the time getting there that must be that must be satisfying to know you're improving as well yeah yeah i think also like in a weird way lockdown was really good to just kind of sit back and look at how far like mm. uh, you know and how much things have changed because i like i'm i i'm a gig pig i love every single night i'm just like when's the next gig when's it happening just looking at the diary trying to fill it up and when it wasn't full i had to be like oh j- shit like I, I have to look back at everything I've done, look at old footage and stuff to put out online mm. and be like, oh, like really, yeah, really, really do it a lot better than the gal who got up and was like, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> and had nothing planned. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like it's like that Matchbox 20 song, you know, how far we've come. But um, yeah, <laughs> that must be, that must I be like 24 seven, man. <laughs> <laughs> it must be like, it must be very cool to look back and think like, you know, this has kind of happened as a happy, happy accident, you know, and all kind of worked and I'm here now. And yeah. Yeah. I definitely made a promise to myself when I started, I was like, Hey, if in five years, this is not looking like a career, don't be one of those people. That's just 
annoying the shit out of everyone and just mm. like 40 years old being like, can I crash on your couch? I've got some gigs in town. Like, oh, no, mm. no, not going to happen. But yeah, I'd like literally what happened it, actually at the five year mark, I was like, oh, I don't know if this is a good thing. I'm just like gigging all the time and doesn't yeah. seem to be really going anywhere. And uh, I was signed up to do the Sydney Comedy Festival and I was like, I'm going to do this. And then if that doesn't work out, then let's start looking at going back to uni and like being serious and not being a leech who's desperate, asking people to come to their shows and holding them ransom, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the day after my show's finished, I got uh, a call from uh, a very big comedy manager and they're like, hey, we want to sit down with you. And they oh, signed wow. me and I was like, wow. oh, f- all right, well, I was planning on quitting, but now we got to do this for life, I guess. Now it's a thing. <laughs> wow, it's incredible. Kind of life works. Isn't yeah. it nice though, just when to have somebody else believe in you like that, you know? Yeah. You go, oh, thank God for that. Because I mean, like my mother, Hamish met my mother the other week, right? She scared the shit out of Hamish, right? Scared the shit yeah. out of him. She's the most intense woman in the world. In, I in, see that for you. It's, it's always the people who are like really charming and silly and fun who have like the most serious mums. Yeah, I love I love her to pieces, but she her name's Karen and she is a Karen, right? <laughs> but she's very like she'll be like really supportive, but that's you know, she shat me out like she should be supportive, you know. <laughs> uh, I lived in there for a while, she's the best hotel I've ever stayed in. But she's she's very supportive. <laughs> but when you have somebody else, and be it a manager or like a booking agent or whatever, who actually says, "No, you are doing the right thing. Keep going," you, it it just lifts you so much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's something I'm so grateful for, and I feel so fucking lucky because there's mm. so many days where you're just like, "Does anyone like me? Mm. Is this any good? What are we doing this for?" Yeah. And then you have someone call you, being like, "Hey, you are good." keep yeah. working we need you to give us some more shit so yeah. we can keep making money you're like oh okay cool cool at the end of the day if there's no spiritual purpose i need to mm. make this person money who's put all their you know bets on me <laughs> i think we're all a bit mentally vulnerable aren't we anyone who gets on a stage i, th- I feel like because <laughs> it is that need for love and affection and attention yeah. and then yeah it's like love me please love me yeah it's crazy it feels like uh all performers come out so confident and you're like, wow, mm. they must mm. kill it. And then there's not, no satisfaction I derive more than uh, there's been a hot night, everyone's done well, everyone's killed it. And then the audience loved it so much they want to come hang out with the comics mm. and just watching them realise that, oh, it is an act. They're not just these like fun, confident people who are like, yeah, yeah I know time. exactly yeah. what I've got to say. To being shy and like nervous and like... <laughs> So now, uncomfortable. Now, Beck, I just want to say something because I, 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 I know uh, Karen Jack's mother is a is a is a lovely lady, and I know she'll be listening to this. So I just I just want to Hi, say Karen. that. But I, um, Karen, this is your intervention. But uh, one, <laughs> I, the next day I was looking up, you know, like buying a meditation bowl or something, you know, one of those bowls that make a noise. It's a killer with. She said, no, 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 just because oh. she said that we, me and Jack have to, we're, we're going too fast or, or, or um, you know, just need to need to be a bit more Zen or something. And, and like, you know, when somebody says something to you, like a, like a little bit of criticism and it rings in your head and you're like, Oh, is, is that, is it true? Is it right? So I was looking up like, like little, like meditation bowls and like Hare Krishna's and like, uh, you know, <laughs> oh man, you are anyway. you are there for one night. I've had this my entire life. You'll get over it. It gets better. <laughs> oh no, what did she say? She just said you need to be more zen. Just, you know what's annoying? She probably hasn't even that. listened to it. She probably, she probably, because she was staying last week. You know, we were gonna, because we, obviously for the listeners, we've tried to do this before and we couldn't because my mother was here, right? And she, they're <laughs> moving to Perth. Me, mom, and dad are moving to Perth from Sydney, so they were staying with us for a little bit. And she's just there. And like when we were doing the Pat Doors, you want she literally had her ear on the door. And she was like, Oh, Jack, I think you were a little bit vulgar there. I think you were a little bit <laughs> over the line. And I was like, Karen, let it go. Like this works. I think the reason this works is Hamish has got ADHD and I'm undiagnosed anything. We don't know yet. But it's just, it works. You know, 
if we're throwing shit at the wall all the time, see if it works. The moment we step into the microphone and say, Beck, what was your inspiration in comedy? I feel like this, <laughs> this, the game's over. We're yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and then that was in the back of my head too. Like, have we, have we just been doing this wrong the whole time? <laughs> like, do we need to be time? like, hello and welcome to another episode of West Underground. Today we have none other than Beck Childwood joining us. Oh, I'm just so nervous. Childwood. Comedy career. <laughs> Have you, no, have you... I think you, on, you, you, sorry. sorry. I had a throw full of water. You've got this cake one. <laughs> oh, I can't remember what I was going to say now. I blanked on it. I, as oh, soon no. as you started talking, I was like, a man speaking. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I am below him in the social tower. In the hierarchy. No, go on. You can say whatever you want. Be honest. Well, I was just on the mums thing. I look, I love mums, respect mums. Mm. I think they're great. I think they deserve to be paid more for the job that they do. Um, and, <laughs> and my mum is similar as well. D- like mm. cannot emotionally se- separate herself from my comedic persona. Cause I'll get on stage and be like, my pussy this and chlamydia Oh yes, I remember. And, I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty damn filthy. Mm. And she, I've had to ban her from coming to my shows. Maybe this is what I should she, do. Yeah. Draw the line. Like, I think, and you do it in a respectful, don't be like, don't come to my fucking shows, mom. Like, yeah. that's not, that's what, what I started with. And we've had to emotionally grow from there <laughs> um, and want to understand each other and, you know, go to therapy. Well, I go to therapy. She <laughs> refuses, but that's She'd okay. She off. Yeah, she grew me so I can just go to therapy for a little bit, Mm. you know, cop that. I think that's fine. (laughs) But I had to sit down and be like, mum, I've gone over this. The person I am on stage, we know, not the same beautiful daughter that you get every single day of your life and you're blessed to have. Um, So how about we just hang out and we continue our relationship and you just don't don't come to shows. Mm. If there's something really big happening, you know, like... Uh, the opera house, of course, come hang. Of, uh, I'm going to include you in that, but no need to listen to my filthy podcast every week. No need to, <laughs> to listen to any of the stuff I put online. You can just, you know, yeah, ignore it. To bed. Ignore yeah. it. Yeah, chill out. That's the best way you can support me. And it took a lot. It took a lot, but we're finally at a stage mm. where she's like, all right, I've accepted it. <laughs> I feel like if I, if I ban my mother from from venues she'll just because she is a car and she'll be like i want to speak to the manager and then she will get <laughs> in you know? yeah that's my fear oh. god love her i'm sure, god love look, Karen. I'm sure she'll god come to you, an Karen. understanding <laughs> oh, it's so hard it's so hard to draw like draw a line with your parents they're like i own you cunt don't tell me <laughs> don't you fucking tell me how it is <laughs> Oh, this has taken years. This wasn't just a one-time conversation with my mum. Is this a weird we in in therapy years, right now? Does this, does this feel like yeah. therapy, Hamish? <laughs> Feels like Monday Night Fever, Jack. Does feel like Monday Night Fever. <laughs> right. Sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> it's good to get things off your chest. <sighs> feel much better. So, Beck, where are you playing <laughs> next? Where, what shows are you doing? Have you um, got, like, I weekly am... spots? To do weekly spots uh oh no that's the hardest thing people are like where do you play i'm like oh mm. anywhere mm. that will give me some drink tokens and mm. a 10 minute spot i love drink the- tokens <laughs> we're not gonna pay oh, you tonight but how about some exposure and some drink tokens yeah how about drove we- tonight thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> you don't want to pay for parking or petrol no you want to increase increase my chances of liver cancer <laughs> yeah cool Cool, 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 cool. Um, but I do have, I'm hosting the comedy store um, from the uh, 11th to I think the 13th or the 10th to the 13th, but it was the Thursday to Friday. I'll be there all weekend. Um, and I am doing a live show in the Gold Coast uh, on the 18th of Beautiful. March. If anyone will be there. I think there. I might be in the Gold Coast actually on the 18th. Really? Mm. Come hang. It's the um, Gold Coast Laughs Festival. So it should be very fun time. Yeah, I think I'm there actually. But if not, we'll me and Hamish, Hamish and I will come down to the comedy store. Yeah, absolutely. Hell yes. What are you guys Hopefully... are you guys touring in the Gold Coast? No. No. <laughs> no I've just gotta go. That's the other shit. <laughs> the shit that pays for this microphone. We're gonna do that. <laughs> but uh no, I would love to see it again anyway. I'd love to see it in a, a strange environment. 
Yeah, not, not a show where everyone's constantly fearing death and wondering if their yeah. Christmas is going to get cancelled. And you, you know what as well? You know what must be a bit strange? Like, because the way the show is advertised and it's like on... Because I've seen it on Facebook, right? So when it's a Facebook ad and it's like, live comedy tonight, forget about COVID. We've got live comedy tonight. Come on now. You get people who are like, I've got nothing else to do tonight because everywhere's closed and it's COVID. I'm going to go and watch the show. And yeah. then not always the people you want to come with the shows, are they? No, no. Uh, always oh, like, oh, Kevin Hart, this should be good. You know, that's not what you want. Yeah. It's also so weird because like no one, like in Australia, people aren't like regular comedy goers. Like mm. there's a couple of people that go regularly, but most people like I saw Will Anderson once in 2005 and <laughs> that was it for me. Like that's done, dusted. Can't be beaten. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I'm grateful for audience that just come on a whim and they're just like, whatever, we'll give it mm, a go. Yeah. I think with that Wednesday night, people weren't thinking through that it's like, am I going to be constantly petrified of sitting in a crowd that's most likely going to give me COVID? They were like, mm-hmm. I like fun. I like, mm. like jokes. That's probably what I need right now. And then yeah. as soon as I sat and realized the situation, they're like, oh, f- oh, n- oh, fuck. I forgot other people were going to be <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not good. If you've got any other comedians who you'd like to put forward anyway that we'll have on here, let oh. us know. People, yeah, I'll have a think like. and I'll send you guys a list. Yeah, do it. Do it. Yeah, oh, there's beautiful. so many people I like. I mean, I'm a big fan of Alex Malinkovich. I think he's he's yeah. very funny and handsome. He's very funny, <laughs> handsome. Doesn't like the world of the ring. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> how, long, how long have you guys been together then? Uh, we are coming up to two years. Wow. Also, congratulations. Yeah, we still got in the life each other after. Fight. You got together in, in a pandemic. Uh, straight after the first lockdown. Oh, so romantic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I oh, I was a mess. I'm surprised at Otalis. I was a massive creep because mm. I'd had a crush on him for ages. And so I sent him a really, really creepy. I don't know why he said yes. A really creepy DM being like, hey, I had a dream about you. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> And if if the gender roles were reversed, yeah. I would have ew yeah, get the yeah. fuck out. I came and saying like, oh, after okay. I watched that special, I had to change my bed sheets. <laughs> yeah, gender roles. <laughs> but I was like, let's go get a drink, and he said yes, like a psycho, and here we mm. are. <laughs> Is it do, you, do you use each other as a sounding board for your comedy? Because your comedy's yes. different. Your comedy's very different. Yeah, it's taken a minute to like get it right as a couple because like as a romantic partner, mm. you want to love everything they do. Encourage. Like, that's amazing, yeah. baby. That's yeah. wonderful. But also because we're both in the business, if we have a joke that the other one doesn't like, you have to be so careful how you say it because you're like, you're not just giving them professional feedback. You're It's a, your relationship as well. Yeah. So mm. you've got to be like, if like, and also because our style is so different, we have to like sit and think and be like, all right, would I do that joke? No, it wouldn't work for me. But for them, yes, it would. Yes, it would. And then you have to like change your face real quick and be like, great. I love it. It's wonderful for you. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard if you don't like something. And then often what we'll do is like, you give the feedback of like, oh, I don't like know if that's really like a vibe. And then we have yeah. to just go sit in separate rooms for five minutes and be like, I love them. That was professional feedback. It is not personal. It has nothing to do with our relationship. Mm. Okay, cool. All right. I can take it on board. <laughs> you ever get jealous of each other? Like, do, is there that thing that comes into it? Like, or like get oh. really competitive? Like, cause I think that would be the had like, you know oh. what I mean? Cause you're in the same kind of, uh, what did you put the, you know, the same, same business? Occupation. Yeah. Same business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, I uh, no, uh, which is great. I think if I started yeah. getting jealous, I think that would be indicative of yeah. maybe things aren't going too well. Because <laughs> any any success he gets, I'm just I'm so stoked and I'm so yeah. happy for him. And I know he feels the same way. And I think that's like we really that's really gooey and mushy and not a funny thing to say at all. But it's the truth. Uh, hey, Mish, have you ever dated another musician? Yeah, I have. I have, and I noticed like. Yeah, like that's why I've got a policy. No, 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 uh, no, sing- no musicians. Yeah, yeah. But it, it didn't pan out so well. No, it didn't pan out. So you well. got me. Got me. Yeah. Now. 
Yeah. And I think, you know, when bringing Jack's mother, Karen, into this, when the last thing she said to it me. It was her. Oh, my he'll goodness. Be, he'll be changing his bed sheets again tomorrow. Jesus. <laughs> Leave my mother out of the same ish. You mentioned no, you're the, bringing her up a lot. Oh, I'm only bringing her up here because she I can't said bring to your mum up. Come on, let's make it fair, Hamish. <laughs> anyway, uh, she said to me, she said to me the other day, she gave me like the the rundown lecture with Jack. She's like, don't don't hurt my boy. Like almost like I was, you know, dating Jack, you know. And it was and it yeah. was a very weird moment that I, I I was thinking in my head, she knows, does Jack you've told her we're not we're not we're not together, yeah. Well, <laughs> like like that. Boy like, can dream, you know? surely. <laughs> I think when you are working together with someone like this closely on like a, you know, a weekly yeah. podcast, it does kind of get into like a bit of a like relationship territory. Cause yeah. I know with, it's so strange. It's right? So strange. It's so weird. Like sometimes you'll be having chats and you're like, are we in a couple? Like this mm. is so like, cause with Alex J who I love and we've had to have like really hard conversations of like, I, we, I, our relationship is fantastic, but it's because we can be so honest with each other and be like, mm. Hey, this thing that you're doing, I know that I, it's not personal, but when you do it, it upsets me. And you're like, oh, shit, sorry. And you've got to like work through that stuff. And like, because you, yeah, you're working together as mm. well as being friends, as well as being, you know, comedians. So you're like, oh, we got to, yeah, put a, put a lot of work in this into this to make it yeah. run smoothly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mish and I do like 11 hours some week. Like literally looking at each other. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. And I, re- I really <laughs> enjoy it. Right. I do really enjoy it. But my missus is like, "You are a couple. You are a <laughs> yeah. couple. Like, you're more I- of a couple than we are." And I'm like, "Not yet, baby. But we are. We are. You know, <laughs> in the sense that I kind of know where his head's at most of the time. And that's, yeah, it's nice. It's nice to have a friend. It, it is, man. And like, I think my missus has been a little bit low, low key jealous of our relationship. Mm. Um, I can but see why also. That. Also, Jack, I want to ask, like, is there anything I do that annoys you? Nothing. Yeah, because I, I can't think of anything that really pisses me off that you do. Except when you bring me mother up all the time. <laughs> no, no, you, you're good, mate. You're good. Yes, man. Thank you. I, I like it. Yeah. We got that out anyway. That's so sweet. Oh, my God. You guys are cute. Five minutes later without each other's throats. <laughs> Beck, if it wasn't I- comedy, what would you be doing? Oh, that's a hard question because I don't have a, like, I think this is the only reason I've stayed in it is after that five-year mark, I'm like, there's no backup plan. There's nothing else. Fuck, this has to be plan. it. Don't have a backup plan. Yeah. I think actually I wouldn't mind being a producer. I did like some producing work over lockdown for the mm. first time. And that was really, really fun and rewarding. So like still, it still have to be like in the creative field. I don't think I could go back to like an office job or like even working as a personal trainer. I think I'd be awful at that, especially now with my drinking tolerance. I'm like, there's no way I could stand in the gym and, you know, pretend to be high and mightier than anyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think it would producing would be, yeah. The vibe. Cool. I think, yeah. well, what, what, you know, every other Australian comedian seems to be like they were, they were studying to be a teacher or something, you know? Like we've heard that story a couple of times. Yeah. A teacher yeah. is a really big one. I, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you know Harry Jun, but he works as a teacher and a comedian. And I think it really helps because you be get tough. like, yeah. Well, you get like, I mean, seven year old hecklers hours. are the same as 70 year old hecklers, aren't they? Yeah. I suppose. Oh, I reckon no. Being in a room full of teenagers, in a room full of teenagers, six hours a day. Are you kidding me? I would, I would rather bomb for five years than do that. That like, yeah, terrified because be they're so mean mm. yeah. and they're stinky and they think they're the best and everything they say is so interesting mm. and they're just like so they're at their bullying peak like they know exactly what will fuck you up and they don't give yeah. a shit yeah. terrifying terrifying yeah. <laughs> yeah scary shit but I think it's the same kind of thing, isn't it? You're still you're still holding the attention, and you've, every day you've got you can walk in there, and you've got like twenty kids that have have no choice but to listen to you control the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. I yeah, maybe oh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I think also the planning as well that goes into teaching. Yeah. Like you got to make a plan for every single day. Mm-hmm. You got to write out like a forty-five minute set for every hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's no let's, way. Let's it's not forget the holidays work. they got though. Come on. 
Yeah, I, I've got a couple of friends sweet. who are teachers, and I'm like, oh, you've just got six weeks off the summer now. And I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> what would you guys do if it wasn't music? And stuff. Oh, no, no way. Um, well, I think I'm doing it at the moment, like just becoming the becoming a becoming a sound dude, you know, like yeah, learning the trade of that at the moment. So I think that's been, you know, if I'm not playing music, at least I'm still inside the yeah. bubble. Yeah, around it. Yeah. And I think, I, I don't know, I just know for myself, I can't be, I, I can't, I don't think I've got the, the, I've got too much ADHD to finish a uni degree. So I'm kind of fucked. So my options then were limited. Yeah. So it's like, I have to be super interested in what I'm doing to actually succeed. Otherwise I'm fucked. Yeah. Yeah, I because I have a bit of ADHD too. Yeah. Like just the idea of sitting in an office for eight hours, panic oh. attack, complete. Yeah. I don't know. Have you ever tried to have an office job before? Yeah. So, How'd it go? Not well. That's why I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like often like I, I this is the only place that I could end up because like this is the only format that I'm good at working with, mm. which is like you work for, you know, an hour a day at night when like you kind of tuck it out a little bit and mm. you, you that's the only time you can really focus like having to get up and get into work in the morning would just be you know I couldn't do it I couldn't yeah. freaking do it yeah 100 percent. but anyway Beck I feel like this is a podcast I I, I like my mind is feels like a part completely it numb I can't think of any more questions yeah. to ask I've just been enjoying this one this has been a this has been a great time Oh, thank you. This has been lovely. I'm sorry for how dusty I was. I hope it still came across. Oh, okay. no, that's good. I was feeling a bit dusty myself this morning. I feel I feel all right now. So it was I just like, like having Mel Gibson on. It was exactly the same as having <laughs> Mel Gibson on. <laughs> just tired, but a little, a little aggressive. Is yeah, that tired, aggressive? A little bit antsy, but no, it's okay. <laughs> well, Beck, thank you for coming on. I'm sorry. I'm. So, I know we've. We've tried to do this before, but it was really good to have you on. Oh, no, my pleasure. I can't this wait really to see fun. you again in a normal room. Yes. Oh, in I really hope it's a good room. one. Please let me give you free tickets for this one, just in case it's not. And I'll give Ooh, you Ooh, we can't send well. out a freebie, can we, Hamish? Uh, we love, we love a freebie. Yeah, oh, freebies forever. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this has been generally really lovely. I always like to have a little bit gas bag about comedy. It's, yeah. 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 It's a good time. And uh, let me know how you reviewing the Godfather goes because I'd yes. like a heads up before I see shit on my favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try not to. I'm really gonna try not to. I think I'm I'm gonna order in some food. I'm gonna get mm. some snacks. I'm gonna settle in, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do my utmost best to respect your favorite film. Thank you. I appreciate that. Back to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you.